Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We're on tour in the United States and on day one of IDF 2014, that's the Intel Developer Forum, held here in San Francisco in California, Intel launched its next generation server processor. It's called the Xeon E5 V3. Simultaneously, Intel also introduced a server reference architecture based on the Xeon E5 V3. We just launched an open network platform for server. Uh, and that's bringing together the assets that we have created, the technologies in our CPU, in our acceleration uh, chipsets, and indeed with our Ethernet components, and then bringing them with, together with the support, the software supporting that, that we've been uh, working with the industry on, like contributions to OpenStack, contributions to Open Daylight. Bring those together and integrate them on the platform and create a reference architecture. Uh, that really create, presents a building block for the industry to build networking services and appliances on top of. This is the Intel Open Network Platform Server Reference Design and the architecture is optimized for SDN and for NFV. You know, SDN comes from people want to have more flexibility in their network and not be tied to the hardware. And funny enough, NF NFV is the same thing. People have been stacking more and more boxes and they're saying, well, do we really want to continue stacking boxes? Meanwhile, they look at the cloud world and IT world and they go, well, there's something over there. I mean, it's not carrier grade, but it's interesting. So there are these sort of formative trends that are enabling that. And then all of, all of a sudden it all comes together and people say, wow, it's here. The architecture hardware is based around the processor, Intel Ethernet, 10 and 40 gigabit Ethernet controllers, and the Intel communication chipset and Intel Quick Assist technology. One of the, the, the hurdles that we have to overcome when going to a standard architecture for the network is a performance and latency issue. Um, I mean, Intel's done an amazing job of improving the performance of their products. The newly aligned Xeon processors they just released are going to really move forward uh, on those performance requirements that need to be met. But there's still some extremely low latency, extremely high throughput requirements in the industry that a standard general purpose CPU struggles with when you really push it to its limits. Well, with this new architecture, this new reference design that we've come up with, Intel has a great technology called Quick Assist and software uh, that they call DPTK, or Data Plane Developers Kit, that allows throughput to be increased significantly on the hardware that's available. It offloads some of the IPSC and encoding and, and other things from the CPU that, that can be better processed in, in uh, silicon outside of the CPU. And it allows for extremely high throughput with less CPU utilization. Meanwhile, the ecosystem takes full account of open source and open standards bodies and the open systems program. To date, Intel has more than 90 partners in the endeavor with more set to join. We are engaging with a number of ecosystem partners to drive reference architectures or blueprints that can be deployed or tri first trialed and then deployed by the service providers. So Etsy NFV has a number of use cases and we are um, actually we actually have POCs and reference architectures for about 5 out of the 9 use cases. All of the advances that we're helping to bring into open source, open standards, um, things like our contributions into OpenStack, contributions into the Open vSwitch, um, our own DPDK, our data plane development kit that we provide as an open source set of libraries and drivers to enable packet processing on, for example, Intel architecture-based solutions. Um, you know, these are a set of ingredients that we are taking and bringing them together as a recipe into a reference architecture that fundamentally allows you to enable networking on the server. This is a reference architecture that is focused across telco cloud and enterprise, and it is specifically a foundational reference architecture that we're using to enable and, and continue to advance what we can do with our Intel Network Builders ecosystem. Ultimately, the goal is to take our ecosystem partnerships, combine them with the reference design, and accelerate trials and deployments like we talked about. All the ecosystem partners eventually want to be found by the service providers. They want to actually get trialed and deployed, and that's how there's revenue and business value for everybody in the ecosystem value chain. So we're putting together a number of different tools and programs to drive matchmaking as well. Together with independent software, orchestration, and control vendors, Intel's goal is to develop on Intel architecture a methodology and ecosystem to make it much easier and quicker to build. We launched a network builders program last year 
and we've, uh, we've actually reconvened many of those members here at this event and it's exciting to see how much progress they're making. Uh, collaboration of ISVs, of hardware vendors, of applications vendors, uh, OS vendors, working together with our technology to fulfill real implementations for, for SDN and NFV. When you bring all of that together and help the end customer, whether they're a, an enterprise customer, a telco service provider, or a, or a cloud service provider, to bring that proof of concept out into the app market and actually deploy it as a real set of services. We're personally watching uh, over 25 to 30 of them in the market across the globe in telco cloud enterprise, and that's really underscoring that there is a big commitment within the market to go and, and make this happen. Um, the real question is, what are going to be the first applications, and is it going to be in cloud, telco, enterprise? That's, I think, what we're waiting to see. Together with DPDK and Quick Assist, this will result in a server fully optimized for the brave new world of SDN and NFV. And, from what we've seen here in San Francisco, that goal is pretty close to achievement. In general, if you look at the IT world, including telecom, the world has changed and a lot of things have happened over the last two decades, uh, whether it's open source, whether you know some of the cloud capabilities and so forth, they've changed the dynamic in terms of the vendors and the, the customers. The customers have a lot more say and obviously the customers want choice. There is high motivation here. This is not a solution looking for a problem. We understand what we're trying to do here. Still in the proof of concept phase in the industry. There's a lot of science that has to be done still. There are a lot of little gotchas and, and hiccups and bottlenecks in the way to get us to a truly implementable solution. But they're getting close. And uh, we're proving that it can be done. We're now doing a few pilots and a few proof of concepts to show how it would operate in the real world. Now the next trick is to show that things can be interoperable, that they can uh, run with multiple solutions on the same network, even federated solutions across the same hardware stacks. And that's going to be very interesting to see how that goes.